Want to learn more about exploring nature? Meet local artist Marjorie Williams Smith. In this studio visit, Marjorie will tell us about her artwork, why she draws flowers, and how she creates her drawings. Hello, my name is Marjorie Williams Smith, and I'm an artist living in Little Rock, Arkansas. I recently retired from teaching art at the University of Arkansas, Little Rock. But now I get to spend full time in my art studio working on my own art. So I thank you for being with me today. In the early 1980s, my husband, AJ Smith, and I were living in New York. My husband is also an artist, and he was invited to take the position of artist in residence at the Arkansas Art Center, which is now known as the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. We thought about it for a while and decided it would be a good opportunity for him, so we decided to move. Now, I must admit, I was hesitant to move to Arkansas. I had always lived in a big city, so it was uh, a little hard for me to think about moving, but we did, and I'm really glad that we did because now um, I get to work full-time on, on my art, but I developed my studio practice here. And I also discovered my primary medium for my work, which is silver point. And that was a very interesting journey to that discovery. It was in 1985, um, I went to the art center, at the time it's art center, and I went to see what was happening in the, in the galleries. So I went and there was a new exhibition titled The Fine Line, Drawing with Silver in America. And this show was absolutely amazing. I saw some wonderful pieces. Uh, the quality of drawing with silver or other metals was just captivating. Um, I looked at artwork by Leo D and Harvey Dinnerstein and Susan Schwab, and I was just inspired. Now I had already started a series of drawings of flowers, particularly roses. And I was using graphite pencil, but when I saw this work, I realized that the ethereal quality that I saw would be great for the drawings that I was doing. So I just knew immediately I'd have to try it. So um, I eventually went to the art store, asked for Silver Point, and they did not have any. Um, and there was no internet available at that time, so I couldn't order it online. So I went back to the exhibition, I bought the catalog, I read it from cover to cover to see if I could find any information as to how to get started. Well, I had a piece of silver, silver jewelry that I fashioned into a tool, I think I even taped it to a pencil, and coated a sheet of drawing paper with acrylic gesso, and that's how I got started. I'd like to give you a mini tour of my studio space. It's relatively small, basically a corner of uh, my converted attic space, but um, I have enough room for everything that I use. This is a commercially made silver point tool. The tip is a little rough right now, so I would probably go in and smooth that down so that it's a little bit more soft. So what I would use is my Arkansas stone to just rub the metal across the stone, which will wear down that rough surface for me just a little bit. Of my other silver point tools, you'll notice that they are of differing widths. Um, with that, I'm able to make different widths of line. I often use copper in my drawings, and I get this from the local hardware store and you'll notice that one is in a stylus holder and one is just taped to a wooden dowel rod. And you can make your own tools. I also have stainless steel and this one in the yellow holder is uh, aluminum. This gives me another type of gray value and uh, these work very nicely on black gesso. I was able to spend a little bit more money and get a gold rod and um, on the black gesso, it will appear yellow, but on a white surface, that mark appears gray. I also purchased 
steel wool and copper wool pads. You might use these to clean your uh, pots and pans, but with the silver point drawing, you can rub these across the surface and create a value field. And that can be very, very interesting and very atmospheric. A support is the surface on which the drawing is made. Types of supports include watercolor paper, museum board, and commercially prepared papers. Papers made especially for silver point and metal point work. A ground is a coating applied to the drawing surface, so the metal will actually leave a mark. A paper is way too soft for you to actually make a drawing with metal on that surface. So you would need a coating, something that's just slightly abrasive so that when you pull the tool across the surface, you will leave small deposits of the metal, allowing you to see your mark. Types of grounds include acrylic gesso, gouache, which is a water-based paint, and a silver point ground commercially prepared specifically for silver point drawing. Once you have your support ready and the ground is in place, you're now ready to make your drawing. I'm using a piece of commercially prepared paper, so I'm all ready to start. And I'm going to use my silver point tool and make marks that you can you can get a better idea of what it looks like. And you can see a nice gray mark on the page. And the more I add to it, the more pronounced it is. People often ask me why I draw flowers. Well, I love flowers. My mom loved flowers. We had flowers around the house. And so whenever I would get flowers for my birthday, or maybe Mother's Day, I wanted to save them, you know. So I would put them in a book and press them, but the idea of that really kind of destroys the form. And so um, once I started drawing flowers, it was a way to keep the form without destroying it. And um, I found too, as the flowers would dry, they took on a certain character. They started to bend and twist and crack Sometimes petals would fall off, and um, I really enjoyed that. And I started to see these forms as symbols for strength and endurance and patience and faith. And um, I really feel there's a, I have a connection to the spiritual energy that I believe exists in nature. And when I'm working from nature, I, I really connect to that. Um, Sometimes the titles for my work may give you a clue as to the symbolism that I feel exists in that piece. So for example, titles such as um, Arrayed in Glory and Make a Joyful Noise are taken from biblical scripture. Um, when I draw with metals, they add to this mystery that I think is there in that symbolism. and. Um, Oftentimes there are things about drawing with the metal that I can't control. And that's another layer of, of mystery, I think, is, that's added to the image. Um, where do I find my subjects? Well, I have flowers in my backyard, I have tulips and azalea, and um, I have amaryllis. And I used those blossoms to draw angels. And when I looked at those blooms, I just felt they were perfect. And therefore, that's how I came up with that title. They just looked perfect. I take pictures also when I'm out about in the neighborhood or if I'm in a park or even driving along the highway. I've even asked my husband to stop the car so I can get out and take photographs of the things that we're passing by. So that's where I get a lot of my subject matter. My advice to anyone who wants to be an artist, um, Really, be prepared to work hard. Work hard at your craft. Um, don't give up, don't give up. Now, hard work pays off. 
And I really believe that sometimes you get discouraged. Someone may, may say something that you, you feel, oh, maybe I should stop. No, don't give up, don't stop. I mean, um, you're not gonna be a success overnight. It takes time. That's that patience, you have to have patience. And um, there, there's good things that happen when you give it everything you have. Um, practice, keep practicing at your craft so that you can get more confident and that confidence is gonna show in your work. Also, visit museums and galleries and go to lectures and go to workshops so you can hear artists talk about the process and you can get firsthand information and ask questions. So um, I really think that that's a good way to help inform your art journey, to give you confidence and to help you produce the things that you would like to produce. I hope I've been able to share something with you today that you feel will help you on your art journey. And I encourage you to stick with it and have fun and be creative. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to watch the other videos on this page to learn how to create your own art inspired by nature and continue creating together.